the solstice has come and gone. It's hotter than ever, which for us in near the ocean means it's two degrees warmer. But this is the best of board game geek summer edition. <laughs> What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We're the Brothers Murph, and that's right. It's the best of Board Game Geek. We're talking about the hottest games of the month, things that are around Board Game Geek. Um, yeah, it's and it, it's the middle of summer, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you know, so there's people traveling. Well, I guess doing the middle stuff. of winter if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, that's fair. Either way, we're about to approach kind of convention season. Yes. So there's a lot of things going on, a lot of games on, and crowdfunding and stuff. So let's get into some hot games and stuff like that. Let's start off, as always, with a bit of Board Game Geek news. <laughs> So our news mainly centers around the Gen Con preview that's being uh, generated. This is something I love that Board Game Geek does is they help compile information that publishers then provide saying that at this upcoming convention, they're doing for like Origins, Essen, and of course Gen Con, which is the one I'm talking about here. These are the games we're gonna have available for demo, available for sale. You can kind of get excited about what's going to be available at the upcoming convention. We use this tool constantly to, to hone in our own interests of like, I gotta make sure it's not by this booth to see this game over here. Uh, it's something that we love doing. It's just so fun to cruise. As it gets closer and closer to the convention, more and more games are being added constantly by publishers. It's just like literally, the best service ever out there for getting organized ahead of a convention. That's the Gen Con preview. Be sure to check it out today. So that is a little bit of Board Game Geek news. Let's get down to the table and talk about the hottest games of the month. All righty, so we're gonna be talking about the 10 hottest games of the month. These are games that have been all over the hotness, all month, up and down, up and down, up and down. Some really interesting ones on here. Doing flame hands. Oh, my doing flame hands. You have to do that in hot. post. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> Let's get the hottest. Number 10 uh, is a game that just hit crowdfunding this week, and this is Shipwrights yes. of the North Sea Redux. This is the new version of Shipwrights of the North Sea. Right. Kind of like second edition-ish. Yeah, but more so but than a second kind of edition. A whole new game. Yeah, a second edition will typically spruce up mechanisms and, and make some changes. This is really a redo. Yeah. And that's, I think, why they put the Redux title yeah, on it. Right. Uh, Shipwrights of the North Sea is from Garfield Games and was always kind of generally considered as like the weakest yeah. Garfield game. I think it was I think it was Shem Phillips' first game, mm -hmm. major mainstream game anyway. Uh, and Shem uh, talked about like, my taste in games have changed yeah. since those days. And now this game reflects his taste yes. in games now. Uh, and we played this one, it's actually really great. I really it changes like it a, lot. a lot. It's heavily inspired by It's a Wonderful World. So it's card drafting and you're really trying to maximize the types of cards you have to ultimately build long ships. We can also build buildings. There's yeah. new worker placement spaces. Fun. There's a bunch of things you can do. Really, really fun game. Uh, and it's just cool to see a designer go back to the well and say like, let me really let me completely change this game. Why this slate clean? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's a cool thing. So that is Shipwrights North Sea Redux number 10. Let's get number nine. Number nine, uh, I feel like anytime there's a new Undaunted game, it bung like, This is Undaunted, the Battle of Britain. Uh, Undaunted is huge. People love oh, Undaunted. Yeah. We still haven't <laughs> played it yet. I really, really want to get it played. <sighs> Me too. But this is kind of like an aerial one about the Battle of Britain. And, yeah, and again, fighting and anytime Undaunted's out here, it's always all over the hottest. People love this series. And I'm so glad that they keep doing it and they seem to keep making them great. Yeah, and they keep doing uh, different things. There's obviously, you know, in this time period, there's a lot of intrigue in different uh, areas and arenas of this war. And I like that they focus on different areas, bringing in some new stuff and creating so many standalone games, this being one of them, where it's like, this is its own whole thing, yeah. but it's part of this kind of through line of the series. Uh, and this is one that I, I'm personally really intrigued by. So yeah. I really want to try this one out. But yeah, we haven't played an Undaunted game yet. It's on our list of things to Got try. To. I've to. almost just impulse bought it a few times. Know, Probably right? should do. Probably should. Uh, but in the comments, if you are an Undaunted fan, which one should we start At with? This by point, the way? Right? At this There's point, right? At this point, I don't know where to begin. Like, <laughs> Probably what's the good? beginning, but Probably, I don't know. who knows? Anyway, that's Undaunted. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight is a game we're personally very excited for, and this is Barcelona. Barcelona. Barcelona from uh, Board and Dice. Oh, yeah. uh, now they have they have T games. Now they have B we're in the games. B series now. <laughs> <laughs> Barcelona is a new uh, uh, kind of bigger weight um, Euro game that they do. This yes. one uh, is about building out Barcelona. And uh, the designer, we actually, I actually got a chance to interview the designer and the artist and the graphic designer. It was a really cool yeah, interview. really cool interview. And got to talk about it. And the, the designer's from Barcelona. And so it's very near and dear to their heart. And you're like building out the kind of different neighborhoods with like tiles and stuff. There's worker placement. It is unbelievably gorgeous. I yes. mean, 
the artists just like absolutely crushed it. They did such a, such a good job. Yeah. And again, it's like big board and dice games, any of the T-series games, we're always- Resource cool. management kind of yeah. stuff, yeah. We're so interested in them always. Where yeah. it's me like, immediately buy, give it to me, please. I will play yeah. it, I'll love it, thank you. <laughs> and to be fair, we always do, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to try this one. Uh, it's gonna be really cool. It's about building a kind of a well-ordered city yeah. and stuff for kind of maximum appeal and beauty. and it's and, gorgeous, uh, man, it's gorgeous. The logistics of all that. So that is Barcelona. Uh, the next in the the TB the board and dice kind of series at number eight. Eight. yeah series. I should, yeah my bad <laughs> next up is a big version of a pretty plain game and that's the castles of burgundy uh, the special edition the big awakened yes, realms the awakened realms alea uh hybrid, uh, <laughs> hybrid. <laughs> game the, the the hybrid everyone expected yes yeah when that when that got <laughs> announced we were like excuse me what? so this is a big super deluxe and i mean super deluxe version of castles yeah. of burgundy that's now hitting people's hands it's now hitting people's hands it was on crowdfunding i think last year yeah. and um yeah it's getting delivered to folks uh, it takes everything you like in Castle Burgundy, brings a couple of new uh, expansions. There's a, yeah. like a vineyard expansion thing that was developed by Steffenfeld. Uh, but mostly it gives you acrylic tiles and stuff, miniatures. If you want minis for all of the buildings, like that exists. Uh, and it There's just deluxifies. Like all of the cows and stuff. Like, yeah. Oh, this one has four cows on yeah. it. Okay, it's like it, it it's gets so... way out there for for if you want to go way to the top in terms of yeah. like fanciness and stuff. So it's an ultimate kind of edition of Castle yes. Burgundy. Of course, it's super classic game that we're big fans of. I really want to try the fancy one just to just to see. see. Yeah, right. Just to see. <laughs> uh, it looks beautiful. It seems like it really came out nice. Yes. Uh, which is the hope with someone like Awakened Realms. You expect like they can handle a game. Yes in that way of making it hyper high quality uh, to a, a game that is, again, really, really great, but never known for its looks. No, so, totally, yeah. Uh, now it kind of has the looks to match the gameplay. Yeah, indeed. So that's Castle Burgundy Special Edition. Seems really cool. It's silly and ridiculous. I love it. Um, but that is number seven. Let's get number six. Number six is a, a, a remake of a game, kind of a rethink. We got a lot of, of redos this We month. do, kind of, yeah. Redos. This is Archeos Society. Uh, this is a remake of Ethnos. Yes. Uh, which we're going to put a on. A reskinning. Like, yeah, a reskin. And this one's more about like you're like archaeologists and you're trying to find like cool artifacts and things like that. Yeah. Um, but it's just Ethnos. Um, and it just, it looks better now. It's got great art and stuff like that. And it's just a re-theme of Ethnos. Ethnos is a game where you are, it's an area control game where you're getting these, in Ethnos, you're getting like different fantasy races, like wizards and trolls and dwarves. Yeah, you'll and stuff like, like that. swap in different ones depending on which game you're playing. Yeah, yeah, and so then this again is, I think some of, it, the gameplay itself, I think is pretty much exactly the same. It's yeah. just um, you're kind of trying to theme. Yeah, collect different colors of cards or types of cards yeah. to be able to play them for their abilities stuff and control regions of the map. So I'm curious how the map part plays out. Right. In this world, uh, uh, the world of this game and stuff, but it looks pretty and stuff. Uh, something I'm curious to try yeah. out, and especially if you're a fan of Ethnos's gameplay and you like the look of this, it might be one worth checking out. That totally. is Archeo Society at number six. Indeed. Number five is uh, Pyramido. Yes. Pyramido, this is like a, a, a domino tile lane game yes. where you're kind of building up this pyramid and crusting it with jewels and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, you're trying to build out, you're, you're actually building in such a way that you do kind of build this little kind of low length. Yeah, it's, it's, it's only tiles, so it's not a uh, very tall pyramid, yeah. but it's a pyramid. But you're kind of playing out uh, these these double-sided tiles in a way to, to create like areas of colors, yeah. and you're trying to make a really fancy, uh, like you said, pyramid, so like there's jewels like, encrusting if you can cover up those jewels and stuff like that. You're the pharaoh and your father's pyramid wasn't good enough. And yeah, so you're like, we gotta make plain, this, so you gotta let's make, make it, this better. Yeah, yeah so put gold all over the place. Yeah, why not? So you're kind of building out this pyramid, but it's kind of like a, you know, a spatial tile laying game where as you build up, I like the element of building up and stacking on top of each other. You're trying to create those areas, cover up jewels and things and make a bunch of matches to mm -hmm. kind of maximize your score. Uh, so that's one that I really want to check out. There's even a how to play by our very own Candice right yeah. here on Board Game Geek channel if you want to find out more about that. It's right there on the page for Pyramido. Yeah. But so number five's getting uh, the interest going on that one. And one yeah. that personally, if it's tiling, it looks probably cool. gonna it's like it. Cool. I like it. Number four is hitting people's hands as well. This would be The Witcher, The Old World. Yeah, so this we talked about this a while back, yeah. The Witcher game, um, and I have been hearing nothing but incredible things about this game. People are really, really loving The Witcher. I kind of talked about it last month as well, but this is a game a lot like The Witcher, where it's a campaign game where you're, you're you know, playing through different missions, campaigns and stuff. But like The Witcher, the video game, uh, there's a lot of kind of like morally ambiguous things, or kind of like gray area things. And basically you can choose different choices in the game and they will have repercussions down the road good and bad depending on the kind of what you're choosing what you're doing and that's very much the witcher like you can choose to do all this stuff sure. 
you know, you can choose might have, like- Might have consequences. Yeah, but it's like, it's probably gonna have pretty bad consequences in the end. And so this game reflects that. And people, I, I've been hearing a lot of people really, really loving this game. It's one I definitely like to try out. We don't play campaign games too much because we don't really have the time for them, yeah. but I'm always interested in them. Absolutely, And it's because yeah. they're always, they're so cool. They're, they're so good nowadays where they're just like, man, this is really, really great. If you have the time and the space to invest in them, they almost always seem worth that investment. Yes, totally. Um, and yeah, this one just seems cool. And again, based on Buzz alone, that's got us personally excited for it. So let us know if you are playing The Witcher Old World. Yeah. How is it? We want to know. Indeed. Number three is a, God, another redo. Now we got a lot that. of redos this month. This is Gloomhaven second edition, <laughs> a true second edition. A though. true second edition, yeah, where they've, <laughs> Gameplay is the same. They've just cleaned up stuff, uh, balanced a lot of stuff. Um, well, we were talking to Isaac Childress, the, the designer of Gloomhaven yeah. and stuff, and saying they redid the whole story. Yes. So it really seems like they start a lot of stuff. Yeah, you start in a different place. You don't start yeah. at the Black Barrow. You start somewhere the else. The story kind of reveals itself a little bit slower this time, and it gives you more time to build things up. So yeah. it is uh, not like a cheaply done redo, it seems. No, no. And this is on crowdfunding right now. Uh, Cephal Affair is doing uh, a big campaign where you can get the second edition of Gloomhaven, uh, there's a Gloomhaven RPG, and then also miniatures for all the monsters in Gloomhaven, Frosthaven, Jocelyn, everything. Yeah. And so you can kind of piecemeal it or go all in yeah, and get and all together. And it's also a second so. printing of Frosthaven. So you can correct, also buy correct. Frosthaven if you want to. Yeah, so. But yeah, so it's a, anything Gloomhaven, people tend to enjoy and tend to be all the hotness. So Gloomhaven second edition is here. Um, yeah. yeah, it was just cool when they announced it. We were like, oh wow, okay, interesting. Um, yeah. And so that's number three. Three, let's get number two. Number two is the new Vital Lacerda game. Anytime yes. Vital announces anything, it's all it's a over. Moment. And uh, this is Inventions, Evolution of Ideas. It's out on crowdfunding, I think right now still. Yep. Um, and we actually got a chance to play this one and it's it's a big one. It's a big heavy game where you are in your society coming up with ideas and then inventing those ideas. People can innovate upon those inventions and then you can share them to the world. But it's kind of got, we talked about Shem earlier and Shem enjoys doing things like shared infrastructure. Yes. And this game kind of does that where it's like, if Mike comes up with the idea for the wheel, he doesn't automatically invent it. He just thought of like round, it rolls. It's like, and what if like you just, things were easier to move? And you're Fair. like, what does that mean? I'll, I'll make it, I guess. Yeah. And then Nick invents it. And then yes. I can invent it. <laughs> and then someone else can then innovate on it and then share it to the world. And you're doing all that. You're trying to gain knowledge of certain things. Cause like to make steel, you have to have knowledge of iron yes. first, right? So it's you're trying way. to like, get your diplomats out to get uh, knowledge of certain things. So yeah. you can actually invent the things you want to invent. A little bit of set collection, a whole bunch of different stuff, but this game is all about chaining, where yes. a ton of the actions allow you to do other actions, and they allow you to do like the full action. You can sometimes put together like times where you're doing like four or five actions in one turn, Yeah, and it gets pretty bonkers, yeah. Yeah, there's, you can pull off these super turns and stuff, and it really is a, a fun puzzle to try to maximize, because you only have 13 turns in the game, Yeah, but you might Kinda, do three yeah. or four actions in those turns, hopefully you are. Uh, but if you like Vital Lacerda, it's a really another beautiful one, you know, tool art. So of course it looks great. Graphic design is on point. And it's one that we can say definitively, I will say for myself, I have not mastered this at all. <laughs> Nick's pretty good at it, but it's really fun to explore. So that's yeah. Inventions, Evolutions of Ideas. All right, let's get to number one. Number one is a game that I am more and more intrigued by every time I look at it. And this is Mr. President, the American Presidency, 2001 to 2020. <laughs> yes. Just a sh nice compact name. This um, is a, a GMT yeah. game, uh, but it's a big, it's humongous, humongous, physically humongous solo game. Yeah, which we, we I honestly, we didn't, we were, we were looking it up again right before we did this list, because we, have, we haven't played it yet. And, um, and for some reason, I didn't realize it was solo. And for some reason, the fact that this is solitaire makes me way more intrigued in these me kinds too. of games. Me too, yeah, I don't know. Because like, just kind of war games or these kind of like Twilight Struggle games, you're like one-on-one -on -one going head to head. I just don't really enjoy that kind of conflict in games. Sure. But this being this like literally a full table size, humongous, kind of like one of these like political games or whatever. Yeah. But it's solo to me, it's like, then you can really just get into that puzzle and stuff. Cause it's like, you're you're essentially you're there's not politics in the game you're not like a running for well, election not, there are politics all well, over yes. the game but you're not running for you are the president you are the president <laughs> and you're just manager you're managing the economy this different issues things things happen you have to tensions deal with overseas tensions allies things. you're just you're you're running the presidency right yeah. and you're and it just you're trying seems to, you're basically trying to put forward your agenda and get as yeah. much of it done 
And much like a real, like, like presidency, it's like, you literally do not have enough resources to do all of this yes. stuff. So how do you make the And people best... are fighting you along the way. Oh and yeah, stuff. yeah there's so crises around the world happening. It wild. But again, yeah. it's like, it's big. It looks really nice. Like I love the kind of big blue board. I think it looks really good. Yeah. And again, it's just I'm huge. very intrigued. And then it's just, it's solo. And I'm just like, what? It just seems <laughs> wild. And yeah. so it's all over BG. People put up session reports and like people are talking I'm about sure it. I'm sure the session reports are just going to be bananas. Yeah, right? Yeah, it seems so interesting. So very, very cool uh, seeming game. Uh, I'm, I'm just like, mm, that seems very interesting, especially that it's solo. I'm like, I'm yeah. fascinated by this game. Absolutely. So that's, that's number one, Mr. President, the American President, 2001, 2002. Are there tournament limits in this game? I don't know how that works, <laughs> but yeah, there's, you know, you're, you're basically ushering, you're, maybe you're see, overseeing several yeah, maybe, you know. offices, uh, but you, it's basically about ushering in the new millennium. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, so that is the top 10 games of the month in terms of who, what people are talking about, all of the hottest. Yep. Uh, we're gonna talk about quickly about the top 10 most played games, but these are logged plays that are on BGG. We'll start from number 10, the Crew Mission Deep Sea is back. It kind of got bumped out of the top yes. 10. Mission Deep Sea is back with 4,528 plays. We got Magic is back. Maybe people are kind of doing meetups up this time of year. That's at 4,586 plays, barely bigger. Than I know, that. then we have Seven No Wonders Duel with 4,644. Oh, this, hi, Mary. This one I think is new to the list. Turing Machine yeah. is on the list. Uh, at, is it at on the like, 4,731? something, is it? Not to my knowledge. Let me know if I'm wrong oh. about that, but it's all over. I, I love it, Turing Machine. Yeah, Turing amazing, Machine's great. So it should be way up there. Uh, Cascadia's on here with 4,900. 903. Very nice. Earth, of course, always around at 5,054. Yeah. Marvel Champions, again, always around. Big solo game at uh, 5,710. Next up, we got Azul, always on the charts, 7,116, 7,116 plays. Indeed, then we had Wingspan with 7,965, and then the power of BGA, Mike. 5,000 views above that, coming in at 12,935 uh, plays, is Arc Nova. <laughs> Holy Which was smokes. already in like the top three, just based off people playing the physical game, yeah. but then jumped up by like six or 7,000 plays a month once it hit BGA. Yes, overall. And it's the, like still in beta, isn't it? Is it out, uh, out? I think it's out, out now. Yeah, Man. I think it's out, out now, but just. And the thing is, it's interesting, is like the overall numbers are down. There's a lot of people traveling this time of year and stuff yes. like that. But that's not stop people playing our playing <laughs> Nova. Sure ain't. 12,000 sure is maybe the highest, is right around the highest we ever see in a month. And, and that's in a month where overall numbers are lower than you can expect. Yeah. Uh, with all the travel and stuff of summer. So wow. very interesting. Uh, Arc Nova will probably be on the top of this list for some amount of probably time. Probably for a while. Uh, and I say well-deserved. It's a yeah, great game. Yeah, so totally. those are the hottest games of the month, the most played games of the month. And uh, with that, I think it's time to get into some Murph picks. My Murph pick is a geek list by JP Cardamone. And this is talking about their first 10 games, the first 10 hobby games. They got modern board games that they got and where they stand on them now. And I feel like that's a very, very interesting list and a very interesting thought process to go down. Cause Mike and I have gone through this thought process before being like, these are the kind of games that got us into the hobby. Like think of the kind of game, that's like say five games that got you into the hobby. And where do you stand on them now? I really would love to know in the comments below. Cause I think it's fascinating to see people's sh uh, interests change within the board gaming hobby. Cause like certain games like Pandemic, we still absolutely love still in our collection, we still play it. But then other things like say Talisman or Catan, we've since moved on. I don't really need to play Talisman anymore. Don't really need to play Catan anymore. But there was still a big part of our gaming hobby um, back in the day and really got us into this hobby as a whole. And so I love that concept of looking back. So I thought this geek was super, super cool. Games like Citadel's on there, even games like Root on there, like really kind of jumping in and seeing like, how do I feel about them now? Do I still have them? Do I still play them? Do I still love them? Or have my taste changed a little bit and I've moved on? Any of those options is honestly completely fine. I just think it's interesting to see how we evolve as gamers. So let's know down in the comments below, what are the first games you got in the hobby with and where do they stand today with you? Now, one of the things that we, of course, love here at Board Game Geek is Game Night. We've, of course, been able to participate in Game Night a couple times, which we're really grateful to have done. This is always a fun show. It's a great way to see playthroughs of games. And one of the games they've done recently is one of the SDJ nominees, Fun Facts. Uh, this has Deborah, Dave, Nikki, and Lincoln playing Fun Facts, which is a great kind of like get to know you, guess how well you know your friends sort of game uh, by giving you kind of numerical questions that you then order, you put your little number in, and then people have to try to put in order uh, what you think from low to high. This is gonna be based on the people at the table. So what's really fun to 
with this playthrough is A, it's a great time and they're having a great time, but it's really fun to make guesses saying like, I think Lincoln is gonna be way up high on this particular question and try to play along as you go and see how well your ranking stacks up with theirs and how well you think you know the game night cast and stuff. It was just a really fun kind of one to interact with as you watched. So make sure you check out that episode. And of course, any other episode of game night, they're always a grand old time. Those are a couple of Murph picks from us, things that we've been enjoying on the site. And now it's time to wrap up with talking about best game of the month. For Most us Most favorite yeah. thing that we played personally, new game, old game, doesn't matter. For me, this was Darwin's Journey. Yeah. We received our copy of it that we backed way back, I think in 2020. Uh, we received our copy and didn't get a chance to play it for a couple months. It's been sitting around. Yeah. And uh, busy. you finally took it upon yourself to like, I'm gonna sit down and learn the rules. Yep and we're gonna play this thing, and we played it, and man, it did not disappoint. It's it really felt good. very worth the wait. It was a long wait, to be fair, to get yeah. this game, but man, it is super Really, good. really fun. I liked it a lot. That that was very close to my mind. My, I'll go ahead and pick his inventions, the evolution ideas. We talked about this during the hotness list. Yeah. I really, really like uh, this Vitalis Serenity game. It's really, really fun. The combos you can put together in the game are just absolutely bonkers. Actually, yeah. in Darwin's Journey, you can put together some pretty crazy combos too, because in that game, you actually get to do a lot of like, this then allows you to do this whole action. That actually might allow you to do another yeah. action. That's something that will always make yes, me enjoy Yes, I love game. combos. It's one of the reasons why I love roll rides, because they tend to be very combo heavy. Yeah. But um, Inventions is fun. You can put together some crazy turns in Inventions. Um, I just really, really enjoyed the game. I, I like it a lot. And I'm curious to see where it's going to kind of land amongst other Vita Lacerda games. That's a good, um, yeah, good yeah. question. So those are our best games of the month down in the comments below. Let us know your favorite game of the month. And uh, that's another Best of Board Game Geek. Thanks for being here. I'm Nick. I'm Mike. We're the Brothers Murph. We'll see you later, everybody. See you next month.